let's listen. Welcome back to Man on the Street, everyone, and today I have the honor of speaking with a hard-hitting drummer who grew up in the metro Detroit area in Berkeley, Michigan. But his travels as the drummer of the Marshall Crenshaw Band took him on some incredible journeys. He met some exciting people and had some wild experiences that most of us could only dream about. He's not only a musician, but he's a solo artist who has put out five different records, and he's also an author. Yes, he was the drummer from the Marshall Crenshaw Band all through the 80s. It's Mr. Robert Crenshaw. Robert, thank you for joining me today on Man on the Street. How are you? Jamie, it is fabulous to be on Man on the Street. I've finally made the big time. <laughs> Robert, you grew up right across the street from here. I mean, literally right across Woodward. We're in Royal Oak and you grew up in Berkeley, Michigan. You graduated from Berkeley High in 1976 and you started playing the drums at age nine. My question to you is, you know, you grew up with these musician brothers, but how and why did you choose the drums? Well, I was about four years old when I got interested in drums, and my brother Marshall was taking, was in the uh, elementary school band, and he had a practice pad, and uh, so I used to kind of tap on it when he was playing drums. And uh, then when that record called Bits and Pieces by the Dave Clark Five came out, that kind of sold me on the drums forever. In 1982, you guys, the Marshall Crenshaw Band, signed a five-record deal with Warner Brothers, and you played on, you know, the first so many albums. And my question to you is, what are your memories like, you know, from the studio playing on those first albums? And, you know, are there songs that you played on through your career with Marshall Crenshaw Band that were your favorites that you liked more than others? So we recorded our first record at the record plant in New York City. And when we got there, there was a bunch of stuff from um, that actually belonged to John Lennon there. So we thought that it was like being in a church or something. I mean, it was like a bigger than life experience. And, you know, almost every single song on that first record, I still love. I mean, there's really, a, you know, they're really great songwriting. And then, you know, as far as the other songs go, I always like playing Blues is King, and I always like playing, you know, I mean, I like playing all those songs because um, just the camaraderie around the recording sessions and also playing them live, you know, I really like all those. I really like all that stuff. I think it's amazing that you guys in your 20s coming up, the Marshall Crenshaw Band, were on so many big television shows. And then you were in a movie, Peggy Sue Got Married, the Nick Cage movie. You played the reunion band at the beginning. But how was it being a 20-year-old kid and then all of a sudden you're on American Bandstand and you're on Merv Griffin and David Letterman and Solid Gold. So the first television show that we were on was the Uncle Floyd show, uh, in, which is shot in New Jersey. And then after that, you know, it just seemed like it was a normal thing for us to go and be on TV. But I will tell you, when we did uh, Letterman and Merv Griffin, we did like... Letterman, I'm sorry, Merv in California on a Wednesday and then went to New York and did Letterman on a Friday. So it was, you know, that kind of p pace. And then after that, it was like, you know, solid gold and all these like after school dance shows and everything. But it was just like going to work, you know, it was just like a, something that we just, it, that's what we did for a living. In the 80s, you guys were on tour with Hall & Oates, Joe Jackson, the Beach Boys, Tina Turner. What are your memories from those tours? Well, the first really big shows that we ever did were with Joe Jackson, you know, and we were playing like Sheds, you know, which is places like Pine Knob, Meriwether Post, um, you know, all those kind of amphitheaters around, you know, the country. Then we did that kind of stuff again with Hall & Oates. But I mean, those, both of those acts are so good. I watch their stuff every night, so I really kind of felt honored. And then once again, I will say that it just was like going to work, you know. I mean, it wasn't, it was like the best job on the world but it was still that's what we did for a living so it was just kind of normal this is a question more probably for long-term uh, diehard Marshall Crenshaw fans but uh, two bass players that you and Marshall played with Chris Donato and Graham maybe 
those are two bass players you guys played with. Tell me, do you still keep in touch with them? Are they still in music? What are those guys up to? So Graham, maybe, I just saw about a month ago at the Michigan Theater in Ann Arbor uh, playing with Joe. And, uh, of course, you know, I, I love Graham. He's uh, an honorary member of the Crenshaw family. Also, Graham helped me with my book. I had him proofread it for me, and he said, your chronology sucks, and you're all over the place, and he ha really helped me straighten it out. So, uh, you know, he's a, he's a really, you know, solid friend. Anyway, I, I, talk, I, talk, I talk to him regularly. And then uh, Chris Donato, I talked to a few times during the book, and actually I talked to him a little more recently than that as well. And, uh, you know, he always talks about getting the band back together. But I think that realistically he has a lot of health problems, you know, so he doesn't really play out anymore. In 2019, I think it was June of 2019, you published your memoir. And here it is right here. Here it is for all the people out there. It is uh, My Mythological Narrative, A Rock Odyssey by Robert Crenshaw. And this, this book here chronicles, you know, your life growing up, I guess, in Berkeley, Michigan. That's some of the things you covered, as well as being on tour with the Marshall Crenshaw Band for a decade. You know, tell us about this book and how people can get their hands on it. So I got the idea to do this book, but I got the idea to do an audio book, and I wanted it to be kind of theatrical and have sound effects, you know, like a cartoon. So that's the way that I approached the, the uh, book. But it starts out, you know, about growing up in Berkeley, and it has a lot of things, references to Detroit, and then it ta and then it goes into moving to New York and my adventures as a, as a professional rock musician. It's very, very family oriented. Also, a lot of stuff about you know about growing up in a family, and and working with your family. <laughs> but but anyway, I I think that anyone who is involved in music in any way would enjoy you know the book. So you know I hope that you go out and, and get it. You can get it on Amazon it, as an audio book, as an as an ebook, as a paperback, and any you know kind of another one of those things where wherever fine books are sold, you can probably get the book. Tell me, what does the future hold for Robert Crenshaw as a musician and, and even an author? But, you know, I was lucky enough three weeks ago to, you know, your brother started a tour of Marshall Crenshaw and one of his first shows was in Ann Arbor, Michigan at the Ark. I had a great seat and I was able to see a great moment where you got up on stage with your brother and played through Cynical Girl and Someday Some Way Again. It was a great moment for fans, very touching. But tell me, you know, you, you do have your own solo career. You know, what will you be doing musically in the future? And as far as being an author, will you be putting out any more books? So musically, what I've been up to and what I'm working on, you know, in the future, uh, I recorded a couple songs with uh, um, my brother John, Marshall's son Dean, Marshall, and also we had Mitch Easter um, do some stuff. And, you know, it was just a couple of songs. We recorded this song from uh, the soundtrack of a movie. Uh, it's a Roger Corman movie called uh, Wild in the Streets. And uh, anyway, and, and that was fun. And, and then also a Holly song. So probably just more like one-off, you know, things with different people. I do stuff with Don Dixon and Bill Lloyd and Jamie Hoover and all that. So probably just another, uh, like a, a buddy friends record, you know, and uh, we'll see. I mean, it could take me a while to do, but you know, usually I have something that I'm, that's uh, in the oven as far as music goes. I want to thank Robert Crenshaw for joining me today on Man on the Street. And I want to thank him and his brother, Marshall for making such amazing music that created so many good memories for me as well as other fans. And people get out there and get his book, My Mythological Narrative, A Rock Odyssey by Robert Crenshaw. And get out there and get his CDs, his solo CDs. You can get them on iTunes, Amazon, and wherever great music is sold. And I believe the book is on Amazon too. And we will see you next time on Man on the Street because everybody has something to say, so let's listen.